Built for agriculture and powered by farm credit, AgDirect's financing terms are among the most flexible in the ag equipment business, matching the income stream of ag producers. Discover why more dealers and their customers are choosing AgDirect to finance, lease, and refinance ag equipment by visiting agdirect.com. I'm Managing Editor Kim Schmidt. Welcome to On the Record. Here's an update on what's currently impacting the ag equipment industry. On December 12th, Titan Machinery celebrated its 10th anniversary as a publicly traded company by ringing the closing bell at NASDAQ. Earlier in the day, the company's leadership held an investor day. Ag Equipment Intelligence editors had the unique privilege of attending the event. During his presentation, Titan CFO Mark Calvota noted the dealership had reduced its inventory by nearly 60% since January 31st, 2015. Titan's near-term goal is to achieve about two times turn on inventory with a path toward a three times turn. Calvota says improving inventory turns will free up cash for alternative uses. Calvota says a large part of how they're going to improve inventory turns, particularly on the used side, has to do with life cycle management of equipment inventory in the field. Well, we're taking some of the emotion out of this for the people that bring in these trades, as an example. And rather than um, whatever, uh, uh, postponing and waiting and this inventory sitting around for a period of time and, and the guy saying, or you know, our, our uh, uh, sales consultant out there who brought it and saying, it's going to go, it's going to go, I got somebody on the hook. It's more forceful now and we're basically saying, if it sticks around for a period of time, we're going to start aggressively retailing it. And after an aggressive retail period of time, we're going to take it and we're going to go to alternative channels, whether that's through our remarketing uh, that we have through our outlet concept, or we take it to auction at the back end of it. Um, you know, we're, we're being much more uh, consistent with that approach uh, going forward. And it's already starting to show benefits. On the new equipment side of the business, Calvota says they're refocusing their efforts on pre-selling equipment to help improve inventory turns. This week's dealer on the move is AgriVision. The 10-store John Deere dealership based in Iowa is expanding its Leon, Iowa store. The 10,000 square foot addition will expand the shop, add parts storage, and a new service manager's office. The expansion is expected to be completed in February. Now here's James DeGraff with the latest from the Technology Corner. Thanks, Kim. Every two years, the Equipment Dealers Association, or EDA, releases their Compensation and Benefits Report, a comparison of salaries, benefits, and unique components of compensation plans from 1,500 dealership responses throughout North America. Included in the most recent report, released and compiled in 2016, is additional data on precision farming-related positions, both at the corporate and dealership level. Included in the analysis are maximum and minimum salaries from varying dealership sizes, ranging from revenues under $10 million to over $100 million. The report also compares commission averages, which are based on profit, total sales, or total salary. All the information and commentary on job descriptions are reported directly by the participating dealerships. Joe Dykes, the EDA's Vice President of Industry Relations, says dealerships looking to compare their compensation plans have used the report in salary assessment reviews, and as the demand for precision products and services continues to expand, insights from dealership peers could become increasingly vital. It's not the definitive book, but it's something that they can see how they're currently way behind the average or if they're above average or if they need to make some adjustments or at least consider some adjustments in these various positions, especially the new positions that are coming on. We added a few new positions this year that we haven't seen, and like agronomist and GPS specialist and things like that. We're seeing more and more of the big dealership groups hire full-time positions to better reflect what they've got to do to service their customers. More coverage from the report and the growing impact on precision services at dealerships can be found online at precisionfarmingdealer.com. Back to you, Kim. Thanks, James. ECHO hosted financial analysts at a briefing on December 19th where company executives stressed continued cost reductions, increased R&D spending in 2018, and several new product launches. ECHO says it will increase research and development spending in 2018 to about 4% of sales, up slightly from the estimated $325 million spent in 2017. The company indicated that it will continue introducing a variety of new products on top of those it has launched in the past two years. According to Michael Schlitzke, analyst for Seaport Global Securities, the most interesting new product was ECHO's Ideal Combine, which ECHO believes will help it to gain market share in the harvester segment of the industry. 
Echo believes Ideal could be a $300 million business within five years, says Schlitzky. As reported previously by Ag Equipment Intelligence, the new Ideal rotary combine developed for world markets will be supplied through Challenger, Fent, Massey Fer and Massey Ferguson dealerships, starting in 2018 in a single neutral graphite gray color with the individual brands represented only by their decals. The new combine design is the culmination of one of Agco's biggest product development projects and aims to propel its harvester operations to the forefront of the market. According to Schlitzky, Agco expects a 9% increase in total revenue in 2018. Dealers in the US and Canada, along with their European counterparts, are feeling more optimistic about business. According to Ag Equipment Intelligence's latest dealer sentiments report, a net 10% of North American dealers are more optimistic versus the previous month. This compares to a net 1% being more optimistic in October and a net 4% being less optimistic in September. This is the highest dealer optimism reading since January 2017 when a net 11% of dealers reported being more optimistic. CEMA's latest business barometer released last week shows that 50% of European dealers consider their current business to be either good or very good. This is up from 43% last month and 41% in October. In the December survey, 84% of dealers expect sales to grow in 2018. This is down from 94% forecasting growth in September. And now from the Implement and Tractor archives. In 1874, Deer and Company introduced the first plow a farmer could actually sit on. Known as the Gilpin Sulky Plow, named for its inventor Gilpin Moore, it was a single bottom plow pulled by three horses and could plow three acres in a 12-hour day. As always, we welcome your feedback. You can send comments and story suggestions to kschmidt at lestermedia.com. From all of us at On the Record, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year.